Wilson Memorial Center, uh, the name Wilson comes from my teacher, Papa Wilson, Dr. Wilson. He's a true, Mars, he's a true godfather and a true pioneer in this field. He's the first generation of the prosthetic surgery. So I wanted to uh, keep his willings, his, will, his, his wills, and uh, his uh, enthusiasm toward the uh, prosthetic urology field to my generation and uh, to, to further, better that will to my next generation. At the same time, uh, I'm physician, and all physicians are basically we are the scientists. As a scientist, to do it better, to do a better science, you need a research. Uh, every single moment, the technologies are advancing, and to keep up with that uh, technology, one should do the research at the same time to see their own practice more objectively. They need a research as well. Uh, secondly, the reason why I, I added it on the, the training for the research center is that a certain level of the surgical technique is really hard to learn many things from the others. So in you uh, being the status like that, you really need a training to further train yourself. Not just uh, every training center has is their own you know, reason why they want to make themselves better. So research and training together, all together, it will result in a better practice. That's why I uh, started the research center and research and training center at my practice. So uh, when I was in the medical school and when I was in the residency, uh, model of the medicine was uh, evidence-based medicine. So we physicians think that uh, evidence is really important, and everything about the medicine, since it's a science or, or the field of the one of the field of the science, many stress the importance of the. Uh, evidence. Why? I think it's because to treat better those life or death situations. For example, a cancer treatment, you know, it's really critical how to choose a treatment for this uh, to save his life. But I believe the paradigm of the medicine is changing nowadays. So uh, the future of the medicine minds is to, should be toward more into the pa treating patient's quality of life. When, when it comes to the quality of life of a patient, uh, we physicians are not the ones who choose a treatment. We are there just to ask uh, what the patient wants. Basically, so uh, in my, well, I believe that uh, it was evidence-based medicine back in the days, but now it should be more into the patient-based, patient-centered medicine. medicine should be the future of the medicine. This can be achieved more patient-centric ways, this can be achieved by a research and the technological advancement and at the same time, change of the physician's concept. We are actually, have been an excellent career, most of us are in our lives. Unfortunately, uh, this doesn't come true when it comes to you know, serving the patient. We physicians are not the one who should be served, but we are there to, to serve our patients. So, this kind of change of the paradigms and the thoughts and the concepts is backed up by a technological advancement. So patient-centric uh, treatment, uh, treatment is actually has a huge relationship with the quality of life care. I think that uh, we physicians should do a hard research and innovate ourselves, our concepts, to better treat the quality of life. After all, all humans want to be happy. And I'm really happy that I can serve my patient for their happier life. So just like the other urologists, you know, I was trained as a, as a general urologist, of course, throughout my residency. Back in the days, I was treating more, more to the, you know, disease, like a, a, a critical disease, like a, a kidney cancer or prostate cancer, those cancer treatments or uh, renal injuries or bladder injuries, those stuff like that. Actually, not more for the patient quality of life, it's a life or death situation. After my uh, general urology training, of course, I went to the prosthetic field. It was a whole lot of different uh, experiences. So many cancer patients doesn't show up and hugs you after six months later of their surgery. 
they just say uh, there, you know, it's a, they say, we tell them, the, we, you, you, we saved your life, but almost that's all. They have to do the key follow-ups and all those stuff, but uh, it's a life or death, not a quality of life. But my prosthetic patients, sometimes when they show up six months later, their happiness is, uh, you know, the, the, it is a different person, like before the surgery and after six months of later the surgery. So in the early days of my prosthetic practice, it really didn't affect me, actually. Well, the, I was really didn't understand what I was doing. And uh, I was just there just, you know, uh, telling them that you will get better. But I really didn't see how it comes to them, into, into their life, how the prosthetic surgery changes their life permanently in a happier ways, I say, happier life. But over the time, those, as the, those happy patients are stacking up, actually that affected me as well as a practitioner. Because now I truly believe that I work for the patient's quality of life, actually their satisfaction in the end for their happiness. So seeing the happy patient is my ultimate goal. So to pursue that ultimate goal, uh, I do the research, I do the training. After all, I want to do a better practice. So uh, being, uh, you know, treating the quality of life of the patients actually changed my physician's quality of life as well. That's why I hope the future medicine should be more centered to the uh, patient quality of life. Because if physician is not happy, how can a patient be happy? That's what I believe. I'm not saying that well, we all should, you know, go for the quality of life. No. But some of us should show them, and uh, maybe we will be able to lead, to follow the path of the future medicine. Future doesn't come by itself. No, I don't think it that way. I don't believe so. We have to be work every day hard, and we have to, you know, research. We have to do, think about it uh, deeply, and uh, you know, and uh, those uh, how we can uh, impact our other's life. Only by doing so, we can have a better answer where we should go, where we should pursue. Uh, without that, we won't be able to see where we should go in the 10 years or 20 years even. Things are changing, uh, environments are changing, technology are advancing, but in that kind of radical changes, where the medicine should go, I believe, if you think about, if we physicians think more onto the patient-centric aspect, we can get a better answer for the future preparation.